Hey guys, what's happening? So, I have a customer, a multi-site customer, that I gotta do an install for. Um, so, actually, m most of my videos are not related to IT, but uh, I'm actually an IT guy, that's what I do for a living. I mean, I do 3D printers and you know, other stuff, but um, what I do for a living is IT. So, kind of sucks I can't film what I'm usually doing, because I can't film you data centers, and I can't fil film you customer wiring closets and server rooms, and, you know, that's super bad form to be putting uh, customers IT equipment on uh, YouTube so but before I installed I'll show you what I'm gonna do here with the ubiquity stuff so I usually like to do that I like to mock it up here make sure I do all the firmware updates to it uh, do some configuration make sure everything works for a couple days kind of burn it in uh, because I want to make sure it works before I put it on site um, so uh, you yeah, got a couple things different things here I got a cloud key uh, Gen 2, uh, so one site's going to be basically a couple access points, cloud key, uh, the USG4 firewall, and a uh, PoE switch, power some phones, access points. I don't actually have the access points here. The access points are already installed. Um, he already had some ubiquity equipment, uh, but on the other site, I'm going to be doing a Dream Machine Pro, and this will be like a firewall. Um, and eventually, it's going to be some camera system, but, but at the smaller site, it's going to be a camera system, two access points, PoE switch, and the small firewall. So I'm going to get this all unpacked and uh, get it going. Alright, so here is the uh, USG firewall. This is actually a firewall better for smaller installations. And, um, I mean, Ubiquity definitely, de 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 definitely the firewall is not the greatest. Uh, I definitely prefer Cisco, but um, Ubiquity is definitely taking a big, you know, put a big hit on uh, Cisco because their equipment's so nice. Their configuration tools, the way you monitor stuff. So I definitely think it's a huge improvement over Cisco. Um, but the firewalls don't actually have a lot of the features that you have on a, on a more uh, modern firewall, like a Cisco ASA. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of uh, Sonic Wall, but those are okay. Um, I, actually, my preferred firewall is Sophos UTM or Sophos XG. But uh, let me show you this little firewall that's here. So this is like an entry small office firewall. Um, I'm guessing you could probably get away with maybe like. 10 to 50 users tops. Really depends on your actual bandwidth, but a couple WAN ports or WAN LAN, and you can actually have a backup uh, LAN port or WAN port. So maybe if you want to like failover, some re you know WAN or internet, internet redundancy, you can do that. And then, uh, so pretty basic. But the cool thing about the ubiquity stuff is that it all communicates with each other. You can manage it from one inter interface. And uh, so I definitely think when it comes to the cost. I think Ubiquity is probably the best. Just being able to actually manage the uh, uh, the access points from one interface. Uh, well, with Cisco, you need like a wireless controller, Cisco switches, Cisco routers, you know, Cisco ASA firewall. Uh, I also do Cisco phone systems. So, um, but yeah, I've been doing Cisco stuff for over 20 years uh, since the uh, late 90s. All right then, I also have a Cloud Key Gen 2. So the Cloud Key Gen 2 is at least the Gen 2 Plus is basically a. Uh, so it has an EM 32 gig of EMT storage, but it also has the optional uh, one uh, one terabyte hard drive, and that could be actually for a uh, for this instance, it's going to be a, a video camera system. So a small installation, maybe like four cameras, and this also stores like the network configuration. It's a cloud key. So it runs a controller software, which then you can manage uh, the internal access points. You can see who's connected. It's, it's really, actually it's really really cool software. It's gonna put a huge hurt on Cisco. Uh, for because for small installations, I'd probably rather run this on Cisco. Plus, this is way more affordable. Um, all right, come the disk. So this is all gonna be part of the same system. All right, and I'll bring out the PoE switch for this site, and then uh, I'll do another video about the the Dream Machine. So the, the Dream Machine is the bigger box, the, the, the rack mount firewall is sort of like an all-in-one box. It's a cloud key controller, video camera system, and firewall. Uh, normally I don't really like to have them so much stuff in one box because if, if that thing fails, your firewall, your cloud controller, and your camera system go down, go down at the same time, but it's not a big installation. It's probably, you know, what are they? they probably have about eight access points and a couple switches. Well, maybe probably like six switches couple different buildings so it's not huge but I don't know um, all right let me get the switch out
All right, so here is the switch. It's a 24 port PoE switch. And if you see the label right there, US24, so 250 watts is the max you can put out. Uh, so for me, I need to probably power about four, four IP phones. Uh, on this side, it's going to have two access points and the uh, cloud key. But I might not power the cloud key off the switch, um, even though the cloud key can be powered by PoE. So I'm going to open this up and I'll get everything mocked up here. All right, so here's the initial configuration. So my own internet connection is on here because I want to be able to do firmware updates and uh, take a look at the hardware. So I have that plugged into WAN 1. That's my own internet connection. And by default, the firewall should have a DHCP server installed. So you want to you want to fire this up first. So fire up the firewall. Power right there. Because you want to make sure the DHCP server is online first before you fire this stuff up. Because this switch will dynamically pick up an address and the, the, the cloud key will get, get addresses from this device by default. But the cool thing about the new version of the cloud key is you'll see the IP address here. But, I mean, I've done this so many times I don't even think about it anymore. I've probably installed 50 of these things at least. Uh, that and just doing Cisco forever. Cisco, I pretty much have programmed every kind of firewall. Um, Alright, so let this thing fire up for a couple seconds. And then I'm going to come back and plug in the switch. Alright. Find the power cord there. Alright. So, I'm hoping that, uh, I mean, since this is a PoE switch, it should power the cloud key. I mean, I'm a little nervous, though. Um, I haven't actually messed with this Gen 2 version yet. That actually has an internal hard drive, but it makes me a little nervous running PoE, powering a hard drive. You know, access points run on a, on a, on a ARM processor, so they are way more power, they use a lot less power consumption. Some of the color phones, IP phones, use more power up, but, um, you know, these Cisco phones like that, those things suck down an insane amount of power. Uh, but, um, alright, this thing fired up, so we should be getting, I think it should be fully fired up now. Alright, yeah, I wish I could make more IT videos. I just, uh, like I said, I can't film my customers' server rooms, you know? I mean, they're going to be like, why are you filming my, why are you filming our server room? <laughs> Alright, got the power on. So it's not like the super high end, the higher end Ubiquiti switches. Um, I actually have like the little LCD, the new ones coming out. Uh, on the Dreambox, on the next video I'm going to do the other site, um, actually has the LCDs on it. Yeah, like, so like any pretty much managed switch, Cisco, de depending on what version you have, it's going to first go through like a self-check. It's going to test the ports and do like a... Most managed switches actually do that. Unmanaged switches usually just power right on. Without doing any sort of hardware check. Because this thing actually has to load firmware. It has to load the software, it's operating system. But when this thing actually is fully loaded, this thing should power on. The cloud key. Yeah, I can hear the fan cycling. So it's testing the fans right now. The uh, you know the temperature control unit, BCM. There we go. All right, now let's do a port check. And you see this power on now. The cloud key. Yeah, this is not gonna be like a really in depth, you know, on how to configure the cloud key, but just a quick mock up. Yeah, like I said, I like to actually usually have this here. Um, I like to let it run for a couple days, and I'll, I'll mod the logs. And really what I'm looking for is hardware problems. Because I don't want to put this, I don't want to install this on site and have this thing fail tomorrow or whatever, have, fail a day later, and not to come back out and the customer's totally down. So I like to make sure all this stuff is, is working correctly, at least for a couple days, kind of burn it in, do firm updates. So that's the IP address, that's the MAC address. Also, what I like to do is I like to make sure this is connected to like the uh, the Unify outside, uh, out, out to Ubiquiti, so I can log this or maintain this remotely, you know, bypassing the firewall. That's actually one of the nice things about the Ubiquiti stuff is that it allows you to do remote access through their web interface. Especially when you have multiple sites, it makes it a lot easier. You can log in quickly remotely. I can see the status of every device in the network and I actually had a customer, that, this actual customer, actually had a printing problem in their network. And it was weird because the, the DHP server scope wasn't configured correctly. 
So somebody that was had a cell phone connected to their Wi-Fi was picking up the same IP address as, as their printer. So whenever this guy's phone would connect to their network, it would shut down their printer, their main printer, so they couldn't print invoices and all kinds of... It was havoc. So I finally figured that out, but I used the, the Unify app to figure out you know, there was some other device getting the same IP address as the uh, as the uh, printer. But what's even what would have been more difficult to troubleshoot was the fact that by default, cell phones have ping turned off, so it would randomly not stop pinging. It was just a headache to figure out. But uh, all right, so I'm gonna come here and now we're fully loaded and it's it's uh, solid. It's no longer flashing. Um, all right. All right, so by default, like I said, I should be on the internet. The WAN interface should pick up a, a DHCP server address. DHCP server should be connected on the LAN interface. So I can already tell I'm on the internet here on my laptop. So let's see, uh, by default, it should be, uh, let's see, the IP config. It should be a slash 24. Alright, one to one. So that's it. My range is different. So another thing the customer wants, I'm going to have NN VPN tunnels between the uh, sites. But uh, K.8 and the uh, Cloud Key got dot seven. So let's open up our own browser. And then the customer site's going to be different. It's going to be 192.168.20.0 on a slash 24 network. So. I mean, if you're an IT guy, then you know what I'm talking about here, with the slash 24s and that kind of stuff. So, uh, 1.7. There it is. Set up. But I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to restore any configuration. So they already have a cloud key. It's weird. So they have two access points at this remote site. And all they have, the only thing you ubiquity they have is two access points. But it's being managed by a cloud key at the other site. So we didn't actually like that. We wanted to actually have its own cloud key because we wanted to secondary uh, use this whole as a uh, camera system. All right, so now the cloud key going on. I'm just going to add the two network devices. So it's going to find the firewall and the switch. I don't have any access points here, so it's not going to see them. As you see, it's the uh, firewall, USG 3P, and the PoE switch. All right. But I need to do a uh, restore configuration on this thing. Because we already have a partial configuration that actually has the access points on it. So, but what I want to do here is I just want to make sure the firmware is up to date. There it is. Uh... Alright. Okay, so I'm going to do updates. So that's interesting. I, I didn't realize that maybe they're getting into... IP phones too, ubiquity, uh, voice. So they're trying to be a complete solution: voice, wireless, camera system. So yeah, because I'd rather do all this uh, updates here and then you know be troubleshooting this on site later. Um, you know, waiting for updates and stuff and stressing out. So uh, it's a lot better to do this stuff you can do it on your test bench. All right, update the uh, available. Okay. First, update the uh, cloud key here. All right, so I'm going to do a software update. I just went to the devices, do a software update for the uh, switch. Um, then I got to restore the network too after this. Yeah, because like I said, the IP range is different. You know, in, in the early versions of this. Uh, these firewalls, man, they, they were horrendous. Um, I, I need to figure out if they still do. This customer actually doesn't need this, but the early versions of this firewall couldn't do one-to-one -one NAT. So you couldn't statically map an internal address to a public IP address. You know, one-to-one, -one, so like every single port would be forward. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I mean this customer is not, doesn't have to protect web servers or anything like that kind of stuff, so... But uh, they don't have, like, internal email servers or anything, just basic internet access, and that's it. But uh, yeah, so these are, you know, if you needed some sophisticated firewalls, I probably wouldn't go ubiquity. All right, guys, get to film this one. So this is the current setup that I'm replacing with the uh, ubiquity stuff. So I was actually here a couple weeks ago, and I was surprised, and if you could tell, <laughs> I was actually cleaning the wires up. Yeah, I mean, this is, 
still a disaster, but you should have seen it before. Yeah, I organized all the phone system, voice related stuff up there. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is just seeing it before I even clean up the wires. All right, so I'm gonna put all the ubiquity stuff up there. Good going. All right, there it is. Got the access points going. Yeah, the wiring's kind of a mess in here. Uh, pretty old building, but yeah, they'd cut out all the old wiring. Like the previous tenant just like left those wires hanging and they're actually active wires. And the problem with this building is it's not a drop ceiling, it's all enclosed, so you can't run new wires internally in the walls. Unless the walls are open. Waste gear.